It was very, very interesting. It started out as a party at my house and the girls were all sitting uh, having conversation and then the, the movie came up from, uh, from England and so it's decided over a glass of wine that maybe we could do it. I went around there and took names from various friends of mine. What was interesting, all these friends of mine were from different areas of my life. Some of them were from the choir, some of them from bowling, and uh, many of them didn't know each other. So it turned out to be quite a thing when a group of strangers got together to make this calendar. And one of the girls pulled out the next morning, and so I went looking for the 12th, and I found her. Unfortunately, she's not here today, but um, her husband happened to have had prostate cancer, so she was number 12, so that's how it started. And it, it seems to me that it turned around in a circle, because after we made the calendar, I sent the calendar to a friend in England, and of course she knew all about the English calendar and the movie. But because she was so intrigued with what we'd done, she showed it to her son. And they live in a very small village, and they're all miners, tough miners. And they decided to do a nude calendar. And they were more nude than we were, because their private part was covered by their pit helmet. So it went a different direction, made money in England as well. What I would think that has happened, other than the fact that we all bonded, um, a bunch of women who did not know each other well, rather bonded, but every time we get together, someone will make a remark or remind us of a funny incident that happened during the shooting or when the pictures were being taken or when we were preparing for it. Uh, the, and then we will all break into great... Like, there are so many memories associated with each shoot. Um, and the other thing is I did a lot of the captioning and the fun I got was just laughing to myself, looking at these pictures and making up captions that just broke me right up and had a grand time doing that. So on a personal level, you know, I enjoyed doing that part of it. I had a couple of negative feedbacks. One was a lady looked me up and down and said, now who would want to look at a nude woman of 75 years of age? That was one. And the other one said, oh, prostate cancer. I don't think it's that serious. So that was another. Definitely doing this calendar made me much more aware of prostate cancer, um, the men's uh, issues with not only the prostate cancer but enlarged prostates and whatnot. I really wasn't that aware, but doing the calendar, we did a little bit of research and we did find out uh, a lot more about it. it. Made me much more aware. We decided that once we were going to do uh, prostate cancer for our men, we decided that the um, making um, donations to the support groups I thought was, was very, very important and, and I was a very, very strong believer in that because men don't talk with each other the way that women do and I felt that they needed a support group, some place where they could go to talk to with other men uh, with the same issue and uh, to get more information and they're, they're much more reticent to talk to just anybody but a support group with, with other men who have had the same issues I thought it was very, very important. We needed to support them so they could support each other. The favorite parts of making the calendar were, the, were definitely the shoots. Um, the funny things that happened and the crazy things and one of the girls falling off a stool while we were doing, she's got the, the painter's easel and, and trying to get just the right shot, just the right position and she fell off and we bruised herself. So we had to wait for a while so the bruises to, to g calm down so that we could do another shoot. The, the shoots were a lot of fun. We had some hilarious moments and, and that was just a lot of fun. My favorite memory was the fact that in a, in a a park with 1,100 homes, it was kept an absolute secret. Nobody knew until the newspaper came out. And I happened to go into one of the buildings to have a coffee. The newspaper had just been delivered, and I heard this man's voice yell out, Holy mackerel! Nudity in Maple Leaf Estates? <laughs> we had a wonderful time when we were downtown Toronto and marching in these... Uh, uh, we were sitting up in the back of Big Convertible, this is our 15 minutes of fame, on big, uh, lovely <laughs> new convertibles as we went up University Avenue as part of the parade. And we were on TV and we were interviewed. All of us have had interviews on TV. 
So, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. The main thing is with all of our going on TV, doing everything that we were doing, we were really trying to make people aware of prostate cancer, aware of the support groups and aware that uh, speak out, uh, don't, don't keep it a secret. And, um, and we is, need our men. Serious. We need our men. One of the captions we had was, uh, what's, how do you get a man to pay attention to you? Well, the first, or listen to you, and the first thing you do is take your clothes off. And apparently it worked because we raised $23,000. We did have t-shirts with the picture of our calendar on it that we wore sometimes. We had uh, prostate cancer awareness blue bracelets, and we had prostate cancer blue ribbon pins, uh, plus a little bear that had a little uh, blue ribbon collar that became our little mascot with a little play on the word bear. Joyce is our photographer. photographer. None of us are professionals. We did our own makeup, we did our own costumes, and Joyce took the pictures. Mm -hmm.